Hi there, this is Becky Berg, and welcome to the video relating to addition on an open number line. And this is part of the strategy series that I've created. In this video, um, our focus is going to be using an open number line to help us solve addition problems. But I also really want you to realize that there are students oftentimes that mentally think about adding in this way, and when they're asked to show their thinking, um, this can be a great tool for them to do that with. Um, and I think you'll understand that a little bit better as we continue this journey. So connections to core, once again, this strongly connects to the properties, place value, and relationships as well as mathematical practice number two, really reasoning about quantity, thinking about the quantity of the numbers we're working with and how we can work with those efficiently. And the properties. These properties are so powerful as students move up through elementary and into pre-algebra, algebra, geometry. And that's why we really emphasize these properties. So you'll notice that the open number line can tie right in with that commutative property as well as that associative property. Okay? So connections to standards in first grade, NBT4, when they're adding within 100, they can use this open number line strategy. Um, and also, you're really going to see how NBT5 and 6, adding and subtracting multiples of 10, really. Um, the open number line can be a good way to show that and to um, get them using the open number line. Second grade, once again, when they're adding and subtracting within a hundred um, and when they're thinking about that relationship between addition and subtraction um, along with the properties. Third grade, when they're solving two-step word problems using the four operations, this might be a tool they use, as well as fluently adding and subtracting within a thousand. And once again, this is one option. This is not always going to be the best tool or the best strategy, but it's going to be an option for them based on the numbers they're working with. So please don't think I'm saying the open number line is the best strategy for every set of numbers we might add, okay? That's not what I'm saying, okay? But you're going to see that oftentimes it can be a quick tool. And then connections to grade four when they are solving problems as well. Now, keep in mind that the other place this open number line fits really nicely with is as they start working with fractions on a number line, they can use, very much like we did with branching, they can use this strategy to chunk and decompose fractions and use an open number line to add. For well, let's just take a quick look at where our K1 students spend some time. Um, they work with different types of manipulatives and tools, but one of them can be a number line. And really, this is an actual number line where the increments are marked. So when students use this, they would think about 6 plus 4 as being 6 plus 1, 2, 3, 4. So 6 plus 4 equals 10, okay? Now, what some kids don't recognize is that when we're counting or when we're moving on a number line, that each step represents one. So even as we're working back at that level, we can have those conversations about what does that step mean? Are we adding one? What's the difference between six and seven? Oh, it's a quantity of one, that kind of thing, okay? So let's take a look at an open number line in which the increments are not marked as being steps of one, for example. An open number line, we establish the starting point. So here we're starting with 80, okay? And we're going to add 5. So instead of a step of 1, we're going to put plus 5. And our total amount equals 85. Okay? Not much power in this, really, because kids can show their thinking using an open number line. 80 plus 5 is 85. But really, kids probably just knew that, all right? Because they're good at their place value. So but this is a really good place just to start, where students can show that they can represent their thinking of how they added by showing that 80 plus 5 using an open number line. So in my opinion, sometimes the open number line is a tool to help us get the answer. Other times, it's a way to show our thinking and how we chunked and added these numbers. 50 plus 10, okay? So 
oftentimes we'll talk about do you want to start on 50 or do would you like to start with 10? Typically kids are going to let you know that the commutative property is powerful and that they like to start with a larger number because it takes less steps. So here we have 50 plus 10 equals 60. Okay. Where do we see the parts in this addition problem? Oh, we see 50 and 10 are the parts. Where's the whole amount? 60, the number that's furthest on the right within that number line. Okay, so as you work through these simple problems, just ask them, where do you see the parts? Where do you see the whole? And if you've been number bonding with your kids, you could even say, where do you see the parts? Well, I see 50 and 10, and what was the whole amount? Okay, so you can make that connection. Another problem. Now, here we have 30 plus 50. We are going to talk about starting with 50, because we have the commutative property, we can add in any order. So we have 50 plus 30, because I'm good at just adding 30. I know 5 tens and 3 tens is 8 tens or 80. Okay? Now, another way that kids might do this, because we don't want to tell them they have to chunk in particular ways, they'll get to some efficient strategies along the way, but they might be more comfortable adding by tens. We have some very explicit standards about adding and subtracting multiples of 10 by 10. Okay. Now here you'll say, how do you know that you added 50 plus 30? Okay. 50. Now where do you see 30? Did you truly add 30? Oh, yes you did. 50 plus 30 equals a total amount of what? 80. Where do you see the parts? 50 plus 30 equals a total or a whole amount of 80. All right? You're going to see why talking about where you see the parts and how you know that you added 30, for example, seeing the parts and where the whole is is really a powerful thing as we work into subtraction with the open number line. All right, so as we take a look at 45 plus 40, some kiddos might straight away go 45 plus 40 equals 85, or 45 plus 10. All right, let's take a look at 52 plus 29. I could think of this as 29. I'm going to start with 29 this time because if I know I can get to a friendly 10, the rest seems pretty easy. That's the way I think you might think about this differently. I'm going to take 29 plus 1, and that equals 30, and then I know that I still need to add 51 more. 30 plus 51 is 81, so 29 plus 1 equals 30, 30 plus 51 equals 81. All right, where do you see the parts? Well, I see 29 here. Where's the other part of 52? And then my whole amount, or my answer, was 81. Okay? So you can see that you want your kids to be really flexible. Some of you might have thought, well, I would have started with 52 and added 8 to get to 60. All right, and that would have been just fine to start that way. Um, you don't want to really tell kids you have to get to the next 10, or you have to add by 30 instead of plus 10, plus 10, plus 10. But what you do want to talk about along the way is, what was efficient for you? Do you think you might try another way next time? And as they see kids doing it efficiently, a lot of times, with practice of adding tens, they start to get to those shortcuts, that repeated reasoning. Really, um, to me, that's that mathematical practice number eight that we're talking about here. Okay? Let's do one more. All right, so let's take a look at a number that has a three digit plus a two digit. Now, the idea is the same. Remember, be it branching or open number lines, that ability to get to the landmark numbers is where the power is. So. Because of the commutative property, I'm most certainly going to start with 526. And I'm going to go ahead and add 4. 
to get to 530. So once again, landmark number. And then I still need to add 30 more. And that will equal 560. So what did I do? I took 526 plus 4. That equals 530. 530 plus 30 equals 560. Okay. Here we can see 34, and 34 is what we added to 526 to equal 560. All right? So you have some more um, practice problems that you have on your practice sheet if you're going along with that. Um, the more you practice this, the easier it gets. Um, we hope that by participating and practicing with a few examples, you can see how an open number line can be a great reasoning tool and a way for students to show their mental thinking.